Capricorn. Okay, so this is Newman News number six from Tuesday, May 15th, 2018 to Wednesday, June 13th. So this is a really interesting year for you. Mars is in your sign right this moment at the making of this video, about to go into Mars and Aquarius actually tomorrow. And uh, it's been there for the last two months. And it's going to be there another month. Now, the reason that this is so significant, there's a couple of different reasons. One of the biggest ones is Mars takes usually about six weeks to go through a sign. So for the fact that it's first foray into Mars and Capricorn space, or rather Mars going through the, the region of space known as Capricorn, is going on for two months and then there's an extra month later on in August is a really big deal. It allows, it's giving you a wonderful boost forward this year. Now this is kind of interesting because we have this boost forward and right now on the, the eve of Mars and Aquarius, maybe some of you are watching this when Mars is actually in Aquarius, we're seeing the energy move forward. Now Mars goes retrograde, oh, I need to confirm this, I believe it's once every two years for the span of about uh, three to four months or so. And so Mars goes into Aquarius and Mars is going to be there for basically five months of this year. Now, this energy is all well and good, especially if you have some Aquarius energy in your chart, Mercury or Venus being the most likely. But regardless, this energy, even if you have no Aquarius palpably in your chart, of course, we have all of the different energies. So you're going to have it influencing a house, at least one of your houses. And um, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's another layer to astrological chart. But regardless, we all have this energy. We're all able to manifest all of the different energies. It's just that our charts are kind of skewed in one direction or another. So in any case, this energy is exciting the Aquarius part of you. And that's really nice because your energy is of Saturn. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, as is Aquarius. So they're the only two signs ruled by Saturn. The only two signs that fully embody what Saturn is all about. The Well, we'll get into that another time. Um, so this is really nice because an energy that you're very familiar with, comfortable with, even if it's not quite Mars and Capricorn, that Mars and Aquarius energy is an energy that is very stimulating for you and is going to be there for five months this year. Again, to compare the usual orbits, it usually takes about six weeks for a planet to traverse a region of space. And Mars is going to be there for five months. And in your own energy of Capricorn for three months this year. So this year is a big year of setting goals that are going to grow over the next two years. And also considering Saturn is in Capricorn. We've talked about this in previous editions of New Moon News. If you're interested in that, feel free to check them out. They're all free. They're all available. Saturn takes about 29 to 30 years to go through all of the different energies and like I was saying Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius so we're in a wonderful span of time where Saturn is in dignity it's in an energy that it functions really nicely in now as always I want to caution against energy hierarchy there's no such thing as one energy being better than another and each energy even if it's in detriment or very challenging has its beauties to offer that even energies that are in dignity can't offer however that all being said so that's all good to keep in mind but Saturn is in a region of space and will continue to be in region in this region and also the next region of space of Aquarius for the next five years, basically, until June 20, what is that, 20, 23, maybe 22, so maybe it's more like four years. Um, but regardless, we're looking at a long period of time in which Saturn is very comfortable. And so what does this mean for us here on Earth in general? It means that the entire world is becoming more orderly, more productive. Now, I know that there might be certain elements of this that is certainly not the case, but then we have other energies that are at, at, uh, at play, that are factors. But however, from the big perspective, from the macrocosmic view, Saturn is starting to order everything. It's starting to say, okay, this is how we become productive. We need to get rid of waste. We need to get rid of, we need to focus on what functions. We need to get let go of what doesn't function. And this is going from the microcosmic view of the individual to the macrocosmic of our entire planet. And this is the beginning of this cycle. This only began December 20, no, what was it? 21st, 20th, something like that, of 2017 when Saturn entered Capricorn. So we've only been at this for about, just about, just about six months or so. From the vantage point of the outer planets, Saturn included, that's not a lot of time. And so, this is really exciting for you. Because Saturn's in Capricorn, we've talked about that in previous editions, so feel free to check that out. But also, Mars is in Capricorn. Both these energies function really nicely in a lot of ways. Mars in Capricorn is exalted. 
Saturn and Capricorn is in dignity. So these energies combined have been a wonderful time. The last two months, the last two lunar cycles have been a wonderful time of you going, okay, what do I wish to accomplish with my life? What do I want to, what do I need to do? What are the seeds that I'm planting that are going to grow over the next two years, a Mars cycle until Mars is back in Capricorn, and over the next 30 years when Saturn is back in Capricorn? That's, that's a huge, those seeds that you're planting are going to build buildings, you know, going to build huge architectural expanses. It's, it's phenomenal at what you're planting right now. It requires patience, however, and it requires seeing the long term and being optimistic about it. Now, you don't have to be foolishly optimistic. It's not good to be that optimistic. It's good to balance it out with pragmatism and realism and going, mm, as well as, ah. However, we are looking at the long term here, and that's where that Aquarius energy comes in really nicely here, that five months of Mars in Aquarius. Because basically, so Mars is in Capricorn, it's conjunct your sun, or it's near your sun energy, and perhaps you have Mercury, Venus, or however, whatever else, any other Capricorn energy you have. Saturn is also there. So Saturn is giving you pressure. Mars is giving you impetus. It's giving you motion forward. It's giving you initiative. Now, again, we're looking at the beginning of a marathon, though. Mars is all about the sprint, but Saturn is saying, no, no, no. Look at the entire race. Look at the huge expanse. If you sprint, you're going to run out of resources. You're going to run out of steam. You're going to run out. Just There will be scarcity to be able to accomplish your goal. And, of course, scarcity in resources means not accomplishing the goal. So what's really nice about this Aquarius energy is it provides a little bit of that understanding of the big picture. And again, this is an energy that you're very familiar with. It's Saturn ruled. However, it is a little bit strange. Even if you have Mercury in Aquarius or Venus or Mars or in Aquarius or whatever else, it is an energy that as a Capricorn, you can appreciate, but it is a little bit challenging too. So this energy sometimes might feel like it's a little bit distracting, like you're focusing a little bit too much on social networking, a little bit too much on ideas, a little bit too much on the abstract when you want to get to the practical. However, it's important to notice that for five months out of this year, Mars will be in Aquarius and that that is the energy we have to work with for better or for worse. Now, what's beautiful about this is those ideas, that social networking, that advancement in the terms of the mind and understanding in the big picture is essential. Every energy is essential in the cosmic wheel. And so as we journey from one energy to another, we're building on what came before. If we had just Mars and Capricorn all the time, it would be out of balance. If we had Mars and whatever all the time, it would be out of balance. So this Aquarius, and it would be very limited and narrow-minded. You know, Again, whatever that energy, Mars and Gemini all the time, limited and narrow-minded. Because ultimately, one energy can't encompass all of the, the, the regions of space, all of the different psychological developments that we need psychological material spiritual physical emotional mental all of these these developments that are a part of human existence and so it's good to let go of trying to put everything back on the ground just to make it all tangible during this time and to focus more on mars and aquarius's ability to bring it out into the air and go okay these are the seeds i planted and i want to move them forward but whose help do I need? I'll bring in this person's help. I'll, I need this person's guidance, their advice, their Aquarius energy. I need their understanding. And perhaps I could make my vision a little bit bigger. You know, I was just trying to reach this goal. I was going for this promotion. I was going for this project fulfillment over the next couple of years, over the next 30 years, you know, especially for career. But maybe I could also throw in this, or maybe I could go about it in a different way. Mars and Aquarius is challenging you over this next lunar cycle and over the next five months, basically, uh, up until August 12th to September 10th, when Mars goes back into Capricorn. We'll get into that in a moment. It's challenging you to be able to broaden your perspective and reach for the stars and to reach for more, to be able to be more content, to be able to be content with a more analytical process and progress uh, logical progress more than actually just getting it done right here right now so again it can be a little bit challenging however it's necessary and also um we'll get into future when mars goes retrograde we'll get into that in future lunar cycles but it's good to keep in mind just because uh, to look forward to august 12th to september 10th when mars goes into capricorn yes it will be retrograde however it will be a wonderful time to be able to make huge progress forward on what you've already been working on for the past two months and be able to fix anything that wasn't quite right and be able to move forward so if you're going ah i've lost my chance to be able to move forward practically and tangibly and and damn you know i, I don't know if i quite use this these last two lunar cycles with the best focus to, to plant seeds for my future don't worry about it mars is going to go back into capricorn from august 12th to september 10th 
with Mars in Aquarius, you can be asking yourself, okay, but who am I? This is a question of individuality, of understanding self, of being able to advance your ideas, to be able to advance in general, and then go back to the practical project. Again, it can be a little bit frustrating because your energy is much more about the tangible, but this is a wonderful time to recognize the connection between the mental and the tangible. Okay, so that's the biggest thing to focus on, uh, especially considering we have Sun going into Gemini Sunday, May 20th, and we have Mercury going into Gemini on May 29th, Tuesday, on the full moon. This is going to be a wonderful time to broaden those ideas. There's nice trine energy between Mars and Aquarius and that Gemini energy, which means it's just flowing really nicely. You'll be able to communicate your ideas with others. You'll be able to listen effectively with others, especially Capricorn is a very patient energy in many ways, or at least of the higher order Capricorn. You know, again, we all have our shadow selves we struggle with, but... Capricorn at its best is able to very much be patient and to listen very effectively and to understand when they don't know something, when they could really use some assistance, some information. So this is a wonderful time. Seek some help. Seek some insight into to what you're seeking to understand and be open to understanding things that you didn't even realize you didn't understand. That's something we all need to do. But especially for Capricorn, that can be really important because you can get stuck a little bit in a rut and a focus, especially with Mars and Saturn and Capricorn uh, recently. And of course, Saturn's still in Capricorn for the next two years of being so focused on the goal that you miss out on, well, hold on, I need to be taking care of myself. And hold on, is this really the goal that I need to do? Or is this just what I want to do? Am I doing this because of other people's opinions or status or trying to reach a certain pay grade? You know, all that stuff can be well and good. However, what are, what's the cost? Time, energy, and um, emotion. You know, I know it might seem silly, but that's a huge part of it, is what are you really motivated to do? What do you feel you need to do to be at your best, to bring your best contribution to the collective? That Mars and Aquarius energy is going to be very helpful, as will this Gemini energy. And perhaps you're finding that your focus on what you've been focusing on is going to be exactly what you want to be doing for a long period of time, if not the rest of your life. That's great, but again, it's good to broaden the perspective, not get so hell-bent on productivity that you lose sight of family, you lose sight of physical health, uh, making sure you're getting enough sleep, making sure you're taking care of nutrition, yoga, being able to lift weights and exercise and just be at peace in the body and to recognize that a productive self is coming from a productive realm mentally, physically, emotionally. And to be productive, you have to be healthy with it. So touching on that, and this is really the last big thing for you, is Venus is going to Cancer Saturday, May 19th. Now this is really wonderful can be a little bit challenging. It can be exactly what we were just talking about, uh, kind of a, a harsh reminder sometimes if you feel any kind of alienation from your family or your loved ones in general, your interactions with others, uh, even your, your professional colleagues and whatnot. For a Capricorn, that can very much be like family in a lot of ways. If you feel that alienation, then that means that something's not quite right. Either you're not in the right workspace, um, you don't have the right frame of mind with it, which is, like I was saying, being too focused on productivity and sacrificing f people's feelings, sacrificing um, the emotional sphere and also the family sphere. That's a big thing. Now, on the plus side, you can also be experiencing a wonderful building of family, a wonderful building of camaraderie with those around you and being able to nurture others and be nurtured by them to be able to continue to grow. And to, again, that is productivity. And it's it's good to focus on that. It's, it's okay to see that, that having a good, healthy family emotionally is helping your career. Now, of course, career is not everything in Capricorn. We're all human. We all have an interest in all the different spheres of our lives. But it is interesting to note that Capricorn does benefit from having a wonderful family. And so this is a great time to build that sense of family, to build. A lot of Capricorns will be having children at this time or seeking to conceive or just spending time with loved ones. And, uh, and family, parents, siblings, again, work colleagues outside of work or even at work, just being able to commune in a very emotionally sensitive and vulnerable way. This is a wonderful part of productivity. Just keep that in mind. And again, this is a wonderful opportunity to just get the family and the emotional sphere right within yourself and in your immediate environment. If you find it's not quite, it's not quite there, it's lacking, ask yourself, what can I do to make this better? And what can I do with my good example to be able to set a good precedent for those around me to be able to follow? And if you find that it's wonderful, keep building. And ultimately, as always, you can keep building one step at a time into the future too. So if it's slow going, remember, everything is possible through time. We just have to take our time, breathe, not get too stressed out, and recognize that it's fun. You know, all the work is fun as long as we're doing the right kind of work, as long as it's fulfilling us. Infinite love to you, my friend. Namaste.